on today's Tech Help for Churches, YouTube closed captions and transcriptions. Hi and welcome again to another episode of Tech Help for Churches. This is the show where every week we talk about using new media, social media, the internet in your church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host. I'd love for you to join the conversation, by the way, so just leave your comments below the video. If you're listening to the audio, that's cool as well. Just head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact. There you can find all my contact information or just drop me a line, paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com. So, We've been talking a lot about using YouTube for your church. One thing that you may have just skipped on over because you thought, well, that doesn't pertain to me, is the closed captions. Let's talk a little bit about some of the advantages of not just leaving that blank, not just letting YouTube create a machine uh, closed caption, but to do it yourself or at least tweak it yourself. First off, by having the closed captions, that basically makes your video more searchable. So while you can have a good title, which I recommend, you can have a good description underneath that, which I also recommend, you can have good keywords, which we talked about last week. All those things are great, but in what you say, there might be plenty of great stuff that people might be searching for that you just leave out of the description because you've only got so much in the description and if your video is 10 minutes long or an hour long or anything more than just a couple of minutes they're likely not be going to be able to find that information but by having uh, closed captions you can uh, make that available. Also, it has the added advantage that it makes it easier for people that say English isn't their first language or maybe they're hearing impaired, but by having closed captions they can read the information as they watch the video. So, I would recommend using the closed captions, but not being content with what Google does because their machine closed captions are less than ideal. So the first tip I have for you is to go through and correct what they have. So you can go through and copy and paste what they have, then bring that in to a text editor or just edit it there in YouTube and create a better version of it. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's very helpful to have something that's closer to what was actually said. So it could be that someone does transcriptions for a living that's a part of your church. Well, you can absolutely enlist them in creating a transcription. You can also just have someone that has a keen ear and can type to just go through and fix that. That's a good way to do it as well. Something else that you might consider is a third-party service. Now you can pay to have someone to do a transcription and that's usually somewhere it can start as well as low as around a dollar a minute so you can see how that could get a little pricey depending on how long your video is. If the vi if you regularly uh, upload five minute videos once a week, no big deal. If you regularly upload an hour long video multiple times a week, that can get a little pricey. So one thing that I do is I don't I'm not uh, content to let Google do their work. I use a third-party service where I'll take my video and I will convert it to MP3 because I've got a podcast on all my videos anyway, so might as well take that MP3 and upload it to a service called VoiceBase, V-O-I-C-E-B-A-S-E dot -E com. 
voice space can do machine transcriptions, but then I take the machine transcription and I listen to the show and I fix the mistakes. For example, Alan. My middle name is Alan, which I spell A-L-A-N. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for choosing the less common spelling. And for whatever reason, VoiceBase always spells it the alternate way, A-L-L-E-N. So, that's a bit of a problem. So I go through and I fix that. Uh, my Thursday show is Techno Babble. I spell it like Tower of Babel. They always choose Babel like talking too much. So I have to go through and fix that. So there are some things that I fix every day, and then sometimes it just mishears. And that's completely normal. That's what we do as people, but we ask. You know, when you're listening to someone, you either infer from context what they actually mean, or you ask what they actually said. This is kind of a game that we play in my household where when you mishear something, you say what you have misheard and then say, is that right? I can't think of an example right now, but this has happened as recently as yesterday. So I know that it's something that people go through and it's not unique to computers. I guess that's just the imperfection of the spoken word. So. If you use the closed caption, the transcriptions, it's a good way to drive more traffic and to be more accessible. And I think that those are both good ways to help get the message out. If you like this content, don't hesitate to subscribe by heading over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts. And there you can get a free church tech gift along with a free subscription to my email newsletter. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. <music>